Hi. Occasionally I found myself with a DXF file that I wanted to convert to a full-size set of prints, something that I could use as a template to directly cut parts from. But my home printer is a garden variety 8.5 by 11 machine. So what you're looking at now is an example of the process I've been using to work around this limitation. In this slide we see a mosaic of letter size sheets that show the frame components for a book scanner at full scale. And in this case that means parts that measure out to something close to 30 inches by 22 inches. And for what it's worth, the source file <clears throat> is a DXF file laid out to show all the scanner parts on a single 4x8 sheet of plywood. Over the last couple of years I've more than once googled for a solution to this dilemma. And while I've found the question asked across numerous forums, I've yet to find an answer that really fits my resources. So, if you too find yourself in this boat, then maybe this video will be of some help. It's a Windows-based solution that uses three pieces of free software, which you may even already have. The first of these, I'm going to assume that you do, is the Adobe Reader and we'll skip over how to get that loaded on a computer. The other two, TrueView and Bullzip, are not as common. So let's take a quick look and see how to and where to get them. Starting with TrueView and using the Google search engine type TrueView, one word, and right away you'll see it's returned a number of ways to get there. I'm going to use this one which takes us to this screen where we have two offerings. Stick with the TrueView column and down at the bottom of the page you're given the option to select either the 32 or 64 bit version. In my case the 32 bit version is the one needed. And from there <clears throat> it's just a matter of following the instructions. Since I already have it loaded here we'll move on to the other component needed, Bullzip. To get that, you pretty much repeat the process. Go back to the Google search engine, type in Bullzip, and then look for a result that points directly to Bullzip. It should take you to a web page that looks like this. Don't be put off by all the dollar signs, but move on down the page, and you'll see that they offer a community version for personal use. Follow that link, and like TrueView, it'll walk you through the install. So now that we have the software loaded, let's take a second to explain how we're going to exploit these two new programs. Bullzip is a PDF converter, but to your, comp to your computer it looks like a printer. And TrueView is a pretty robust DXF viewer. In fact, I found it'll often show an accurate rendering of a DXF file it won't display correctly or will completely error out <clears throat> in other DXF applications. But it's just a viewer, not a DXF editor. Having said that, it does support printing DXF files and as you'll soon see, we're going to take advantage of that feature. So the steps to making a full-size print is use TrueView to zero in on the region of the DXF file we want to print and then use Bullzip to convert that area to a, a full-size PDF. Okay, now that we've got the theory, let's see how to put it to practice. We'll start by launching TrueView. Once it's up and running, the next step is to open a DXF file. Now, let's pick some parts to print. The scanner has a pair of brackets that we'll use for this example. Using TrueView's measuring tool, we can determine that these brackets are roughly eight, excuse me, nine inches by ten inches. Once that's known, we can then move to select the TrueView print. We can then move to select the TrueView print tool. Now, with the print wizard visible. The first order of business is to select the Bullzip Virtual Printer. Once it's selected, 
I then use its companion list of paper options to find a paper size needed to print the parts. If you're not familiar with what these size designations represent, then just pick one in the series at random. And Truvu Print Wizard will show you its exact dimensions. In general, with a, within a given series, like C0, C1, C2, and so on, as you move up the series, the paper size will get smaller. Next, select the print which print region option you want to use. In this example, I only want to print a small subsection of the file. So I'm using the window option. That way I can define the exact area I want. After that, I'm going to set the scale of the print. To do this, I start by first deselecting the default fit to paper checkbox and then using the drop down that's now active select the one to one scale. At this point the window that showed me the paper dimensions is now also showing how the current selected print region is going to map to my paper choice. Additionally I can use the preview button to inspect my choices in more detail. In this case, the window fits the paper okay, but some vital part lines are missing. So, by going back to the print region option, I can reselect the area to be printed and then preview it again. This time I'm happy with the results, so I'll commit to printing the view. But remember, at this point, we're not printing to a real paper, to a real printer, but to a program that's going to make a full-scale PDF file of just that region. <clears throat> Bullzip starts the conversion, but soon stops to let us set the file name to save it to. Since I've already done some others, it assumes that I want to save to this file in the same directory that was used previously, which I do. And I'll continue the naming sequence that I've been using. Once the file, has been set, file name has been set, I click on the Save button at the bottom of the page and Bullzip completes the save process and then automatically opens the Adobe Viewer program. And, we're pretty, and we see pretty much the same thing we saw in the TrueView print preview. So at this point we can select the Adobe's print tool. But this time, since we're going to print the real paper, I'll make sure that we have the right printer selected. And in this case, it's my default printer. And because it's loaded with 8.5 by 11 paper, I'll make sure the poster print option has been selected. The print wizard should have done this by default, but just to be sure, I've clicked the poster choice anyway. <clears throat> the Prother printer I'm using supports some advanced options, and yours probably does too. So before printing, I'm going to click the advanced options button, which opens the Brother print wizard. The two things I'm looking to set up are borderless, which means it's going to print as close to the edge of the paper as it dares, meaning that the fewest number of sheets to print, and at the same time it cuts the blank overlap to a minimum. The other option I'm going to set is ignore any color references that have been ported across the DXF PDF conversion and print the job as a simple black and white image. Once these have been set, we're ready to commit the output to paper. Note that in this example, the Adobe Print Wizard also shows us that the job will consume eight sheets of paper. Well, that's the process in a nutshell. The following slides are examples of this process as it was applied to other parts of the Book Scanner project. I think once you walk through it, you'll find it to be an intuitive and predictable process. And at the same time, 
it offers a fair amount of flexibility in what you can print on a simple home printer. I hope this helps you with your project and as always thanks for watching.